how much all that shit is. I feel sorry for most of you people. That's all I uh, ask you just for a, a quarter. Only because I can't ask you for a dime, they won't let me. I don't run the business. They want their share of the money too. They don't do any work for nothing, people. Everybody has to go to work and make a living and support their families. Everybody. Not just you people. Everybody has to do it. I have to do it. And, you know, let's go back to what wife said it mad at me asking for a few pennies a week for people to demand that I sing some of her songs. Make requests. I don't know how old they are. I don't even know what sex they are. Sometimes I kind of get, I don't, I wonder to myself, I wonder if this is a man or woman I'm dealing with, or is it a boy or a girl? I don't know. And I definitely don't know that you're not even out of high school yet or grade school, and you're watching my channel, and I'm asking you to do a quarter a week, and you can't afford it. I already know that. But I don't know how old you are, so how can I respond to you? I'm responding to you like 18 or 19 ago. You're out of school. You got a, a job. You're working at McDonald's or something. Or some other kind of low paying job. But you got something. I can't ask you for less than a quarter a week. They won't go any lower than that. I don't know how old you are. I don't even know if you're white or gay. Or black or yellow. Nothing. No, nothing about you. I just asked him for a, truck, a small support. I have a $125 a month entertainment bill. Who's going to pay for that? Who's going to pay for $100 a year or so the Geek Squad charges me when somebody fucks with my computer? You think that's for free? Because I'm Johnny D. <laughs> no, it's more expensive than I'm Johnny D. But I don't mind. If I could ask you for less than a quarter a week, believe me, I would. I don't control the prices. The people who work for Patreon, they have to make a little bit of money too. They don't ain't gonna work for free people. No, nobody's free. And all that stuff they, they give you away on the internet or on your cell phone, it's all a scam. Nobody ever gave me nothing for free. Not even a small box of tie or some, a sampling of some product cheap in the mail. Didn't even get that. And they asked you thousands of questions. Who are you want some insurance? You want this, you want that. We can buy this for you. All to get your phone number. So that you can tie up your phone all day long. You know what I, my son taught me? How to just accept the people that are in your, your contacts in your phone. And the rest, you just put the dinner out to serve. And your phone will be busy all day long. And the spammers trying to sell you this and that. You know, the hundreds of calls I get for getting a back brace for free from Medicare? It gets sickening after a while, people. Sickening. So you don't even bother answering your phone anymore. And the party ones that leave a message, you can call them back. That's the only reason. I got it. I don't know what to say to you people. If I knew you were just a kid in high school or grade school making a request, I wouldn't bug you that quarter a week. I'll wait till you're 20 years old or older. You got a, a credit card. You got some money to make. You're working. I don't want you asking your parents for a quarter. So you can watch Johnny D. <laughs> Keep your quarter, people, you kids. Let's see, what else is there to talk about? Women are gold diggers, man. Be careful who you marry. Sure. I gave my wife a lot of money. The bank account is dry. Now she's after the rest of the money. No need to do that. The divorce, John, Johnny D. Get my share. Get the fifty percent of the house that we bought. And I did everything for her. 
I even went to far as saying, well, I used to drive all the way to Rosemont when I lost my job at Ample Tubes back in 95. And I was tired of driving one hour to go to work down the tollway, paying the toll fees to get there and back. I got tired of that after working 10 hours a day to support my family, for my second wife, for Brian and Lorraine, my children. So I agreed to her, okay, we'll rent out our house to help pay the rent for your big expensive apartment over here where I'm living now. So you can be close to your job and only, you don't even have to take a car with your packet, walk over there and do your job. Leave the car parked in the parking space over there in the apartments and save money on gas and have two hours extra a day to do whatever you want. Well, that's too much boring drive to work every day and back. Since you don't want to teach the black kids around our neighborhood, because they're too annoying, you can come down to the good school where the black kids want to learn something, and the white kids too. And they can get them to the brand schools. Everything around here costs a fortune, people. And one thing I can't understand is you go to Watergate's here, where all the rich people live, and ask, can I get some extra money on my debit card? So I don't have to use a credit card at a bar and then send them, no, have you call someday when your credit card's calling you the next morning and tell you, sir, somebody spent $600 of really expensive clothing on your credit card. And we thought it was like suspicious. We want to let, let you know, I, it wasn't you that charged it? I said, no, <laughs> I'm going to do a $600 from England, from real expensive clothes. That's what happened when I used a credit card at a bar. Did I go to every week? People are after your money. Some one of those bartenders there, or a club I used to go to, they used my car to call in expensive clothes. And what are they going to do with expensive clothes? Maybe sell it to somebody for half price and keep the other money for other expenses. Who knows? That's the only reason I use a debit card to get money now, so I can pay cash at the bar. And you gotta watch when you pay them a 20 or a 10. Sometimes you give them a 20, and they say, oh no, you only give me a $10, sir. Here's your change for a 20. And you're gonna have a $10 tip on it. Because you think you're too drunk to remember. To cut a lot of tricks up their sleeves, little bartender. You gotta watch them, too. <laughs> They're all crooks! Not all of them. Some are uh, honest people. But uh, those ones that were in Fox Lake, I don't think uh, I'm, they taught me not to use a credit card at a bank no more. At a bar. You never know. They might uh, get a little extra money because they're poor. There's a lot of things other people have that they don't. They want to be, can get a little bit more money in their bank account. They'll still get it. There's a lot of bad people out there, people. A lot of bad people on the internet. They scam me. They're going to get to do it later. They're going to scam you too. And why can't you get a real phone number when you ask Google? How did they do that? I was having trouble with my car after crash, I bought another one, old one. With the money I gave from a car I crashed, I could only afford a car cash. One thing my cat our credit was no good, I couldn't even buy another car. My wife were in debt for me. I had to pay a couple dollars extra for for insurance, papers, a warranty, even Honda can break down people and cost you a fortune on your bank account. My uh, 2,000 Honda suit with the CVT transmission. I said, well, Honda, it's the best car in the world. So is Toyota. This shouldn't cost me. Why should I even buy a warranty? It's a good thing I did, though. The car I spent $1,000, $1,500. But the transmission went out. Uh, and the car is... Uh, this is a little bit over three years old. It went out. I took over a day or so. 
The car's not working any good. Fix it. And they told me it's going to cost three thousand dollars to get a, a transmission from Japan. They're owning a lot of Americans to build their transmission here. They don't trust us. They're going to just get a whole new transmission from Japan and take the old one out and put that one in. That's all that a lot of the American uh, Honda dealers do. It's a good thing I got that. I only had to pay him a hundred dollars for it work. It's a good thing I got the extra warranty. I can just ask that you get one too. Unless you're a full fledged mechanic and you do all the work yourself and have that buy the equipment that they have over at the dealers to do all that other expensive work. You must have you must have a lot of tools too. <laughs> but that's where we're living, people. So, uh, yeah, I had to buy a car for, uh, I got 16 for from a junk car, which I think cost too much money to fix. And uh, there was a lot of good parts of that in that car, a $35,000 car. I bet the junk car dealers pay, charge people a lot of money to take parts off that car. I'm sure they got an insurance company to get their money back. And even if they don't, they're going to get it back when the next time you apply for a shirt, they're going to charge the fuck out of you. You're going to be paying too little to people. You only even have insurance to pay for all the other people to get that. If you get one, you're going to start paying too little too. A lot more than you were paying before. So that they can get their money back. That's the way it goes. First your money. Then you're close. <laughs> oh well. Yeah. I'm happy, enough, but uh, my Honda Civic, I want a GPS like I had in my Honda Accord that I crashed. We're not paying attention 100% full time, not even taking your mind off the road for a split second and running the back end of other people. It was my fault, but it was just about the second that they took in my GPS, I called it accident. I wanted a screen on my dashboard, like a handle of my car, so I wouldn't get to an interaction like that. So I, um, I bought the wires for my car, and these special wire. You have to cut the real most expensive kind, hundred dollars for just two, three little wires, about three or four feet long. They'll try the hell out of you. And then uh, you have to buy two apps for your uh, for your smartphone. My iPhone 8. You have to buy two apps. Then another hundred bucks out the window. But then it's still, you know, a hundred dollars for what? Uh, maybe one or two hundred for the app. It's three hundred dollars. And a seven hundred dollar phone call that you can use for other things besides driving around town. Going different places with your GPS. And this device here, it puts a picture of your driving on the dashboard. I'd like an eight inch long picture, maybe six inches high. So you get into an interaction trying to read your cell phone. Where in the hell are you supposed to go next? I thought that was great. But it was much more difficult to use than the normal GPS. It, I couldn't figure out some things, how it was supposed to work. So I decided to call the Apple store, the people that sell iPhone. And I got the number from my uh, Google on the internet. Since they don't give out the regular phone books anymore, they quit doing that. You don't get no telephone books anymore, Mr. People, there's no telephone booths. You want a number? You have to go to the internet to get it. So that's what I did. I was going to call it dinner and find out what I was doing wrong with myself and why I can't get anywhere to go, go anywhere in my car with my GPS. There's a lot to learn when you do it that way. Sure, it only costs you two or three hundred dollars with your expenses for your cell phone that you already got anyway. 
You know how much the Steve has cost me in that Accord? The 2013 Accord? Make a guess. It cost me $2,000 for that when I bought that brand new car. It's not cheap. Here, I'm only spending $300. I'm going to get the same thing. But it's much harder to use than a normal GPS. So I'm going to call Apple because I ain't got no yellow pages to tell me what number to call Apple. And believe you me, I don't think of Apple people are crazy. They got one store for one million people in the, in the city of Jacksonville. If you try to go down there and try to get your phone fixed by yourself, you're out of luck. They're going to tell you to come back tomorrow and make an appointment. And even when you make an appointment the next day or two days from then, whatever, you can get down there right on time. You're going to wait another two or three hours. Because they only got one store for one million people. Isn't that something? So here I am, uh, trying to avoid all that BS, and maybe I can get my answers suddenly on the phone. So I call up a number that Google gets me, and I get an Apple employee. And he scans me on $1,000, it's gonna help me get my, my, uh, my channel back. He promises, and it's not gonna cost you one red cent. Oh, bullshit! I lost a thousand dollars on the people buying that guy gift cards and taking off the label and reading those labels back to them. There's crooks all over the world, even at your local Apple store that Google gives you on the internet. How am I supposed to know he wasn't a real Apple employee? Here I thought, oh man, I'm going to get all my money back, this thing can cost me today, and I'm going to be fine tomorrow, and I'll have my channel back. What a fool I was. There was another thousand now. It's a good thing when I bought those cell phones with my wife for a last anniversary, which I'm glad that she remembered something that she got from me. <laughs> it's a good thing I remember that. Huh. Sure. Well, old senior citizen, I got fooled again. Got scammed again. PewDiePie, we mentioned. She, my wife told my to make sure to tell everybody what a stupid, crazy husband she's got. After I helped her, I spent all my life savings on her and everything. Now she wants to be so she can get more money. There's not a thousands of dollars sitting in the bank anymore, people. That's the only way she can get more money, is to get a divorce. Just like Gold Digger in the movie, the song I love to sing. Even the most uh, money-making black person got mad at me for using his songs. He got the copywriters on my ass. One time I used the song, uh, um, the, his other song, about, and he has this woman singing, uh, all for, what's the name of the song again? This is the man I'll tell you, you uh, he put you a strike against me. Kanye West, kind of one of the most, most richest, richest black singers in the, in the world. world. All, all I have, uh, oh, it all falls down. I think they have Kanye West and Emil or somebody doing the women's part. He put a strike against me. That's the worst thing you could do. Kanye West! He's even from the same area of the United States I'm from. Chicago! If you get three strikes, people, you're out of YouTube for good the rest of your life. That's the worst thing you could do to an amateur singer like me. It put a strike in. Just for singing that song. I don't know why it's so great. Did his wife, that real sexy Italian woman, the Kardashian, 
the Carnation Girls. Did any of you get it? Did she say something nice about me? And get kind of jealous? What's going on here? And uh, Bonds, his other song, Bonds, he put a uh, copyright against that too. That's the one I went to, heard when I first met my son around 1960, um, 1917, no, it was around 1970. Uh, Bonds too. He put a strike on that one too. He put a, a slight strike against the. Uh, not a strike, but a copyright against a gold digger. When I got out of the hospital in Illinois last time, I was there for in the morning. Put a strike on that too. A not a strike, a copyright. But if you put a strike, where it all goes and all falls in, that was really bad for me. I love this music too. I figured you were one of the best rappers. Besides Drake. Jake and Jay-Z are pretty good too, and uh, Yo Gotti, and, and Big Baby, Baby Jam, Jam, and the Little Turtles VIP. But, uh, yeah, this has got out there, people. I think his wife made me, well, he's kind of killer or something. He must have, she or his wife must have done to put a strike against me. It can't because he's going to lose a couple cents under some of his video. Sometimes I helped the, the main singers in the United States. People who were here in my group, they had to They didn't turn in again, they make some more money. The smart ones have copywriters that invest, uh, they tax the money, money to make off of YouTube. They want half. Those are the smart ones, people. Because if they don't take off the whole thing and they want all the money from my video, to go to the bank accounts, then they don't get nothing. Because I take them off YouTube and put them on Patreon, where they can't touch them. And that's funny the way how the wall works in the United States, isn't it, people? You don't know this because you don't do sing songs for a living. You'll never learn. Unless you're like me, then you know what it costs to be a singer or a small center. I think my son would probably be better in taking over for me after I kicked the bucket than my daughter. He really, uh, he gave it him. It took me forever. I tried to find my own son's song that I put on there because I didn't put the name of the song and the artist or something, you, you have, have to put down exactly what you call that song when you go back in history and try to find out how many views does my son have now? They went nutty! Who in the hell would burn your nerves? I mean, as I said that, because they wouldn't show me. They show me all the other brands in the United States. And there's thousands of them. But I found out today, because I asked him to go through his records, and he found what I, the name I did put down. It's called, instead of his rap song, which is a strange name myself, because I never recognized it as being the rap song, so I didn't bother about it. But he got 13,000 views from it. So maybe he's the one to take over for Johnny D. My daughter, uh, even though she's only been a week, I think she's only got like 1,300, not 13,000. Who knows? Maybe, I'll, maybe it's the next year, maybe she'll be up to Brian's 13,000. And my son also did a, a regular song, but you guys didn't uh, say too much about that one, even though it's one of your most famous singers. Ed Strimmer, Ed Stan Strimmer? The one kid has a uh, slightly red hair, just like my kids do. My most of my kids have slightly red hair because their mother was Irish. 
We have two other uh, nationalities. Plus, they've got my three in my children. I think it's uh, my wife's second wife. She is uh, Irish, uh, English, and Dutch. Um, of course, me, I'm Italian, French, and Polish. So my kids got six nationalities. They're mucks, like most of us are nowadays. But we're healthier, the more national you can have in the healthier you are. Just like the dogs, who are the same uh, heritage, they're not as healthy as one, a variety dog. Even dogs, it helps out them too. So that's the way it goes, people. Anyway, um, let my wife explain to you how bad of a husband she had because I didn't wish her, oh, honey bunch, you did so good by getting your bachelor's degree, just doing it on your own. I went to computer at home. What a bunch of bullshit. And I let her, as you people know, as some of you can play about it, I let her use my channel because I love her. And look at the thanks she gives me. You think, how far is she going to get with her 6,000 subscribers? How much uh, is she going to get for her streaming? How many people are going to hand her five, ten dollars? I think she's doing one thing right. YouTube, YouTube must like her because they're going to prove her, send her a check pretty soon to her bank account. Something I haven't been able to do. But people, you know, that's not going to be very much. Which she's going to say off my channel, a gift I gave to her, and she's refusing because she wants to make a couple of the lies about me to make herself look good. And so the rest of the money, and nobody's going to be the wiser. Well, I'll tell you people, you are not wise to the fact what's going on. Are you going to believe it? Don't forget, I've been around the block two times. This is my third marriage, and probably my last. I think I'll ask my son, to come here and we'll get a big apartment together and help him support and uh, be around with my grandson that I'm going to get in the end of April, maybe the first of May, a boy, another grandson, or maybe I'll get my daughter and her husband to move down here. I certainly don't want to live near Chicago. You know what the people say now on the internet? Uh, not talking about 911 anymore. Not talking about the Hollywood movie to the moon. They're not talking excuses they have to go to Afghanistan and Iraq. Because I'm worse going on now, people. Y'all gonna die. It's not never ruined anymore either. We're gonna fret. The ice age is coming back. If you don't live on the equator, you're gonna drop dead. The whole world is going to be a big ice icefall. They're going to starve to death. You know, the temperature in Chicago tomorrow is going to be below zero. That's bad, people. I know what below zero means. And all you people who are in England, Britain, Ireland, you get that warm breeze coming up from the south in the wintertime. Even your winter is very mild. That's going to disappear, people. You're all going to freeze it. You ain't going to be able to grow crops. You're going to be able to grow weeds for, for bread, oats for your edibles and for your breakfast. Uh, corn. You're not going to have any more corn. Because it'll be, all your farm ants going to turn to ice. And I know it's something too. The price of our house has gone up in value much more faster than Illinois has ever been. Matter of fact, the house I bought up in Wisconsin, where I had my, both my children, 
1976 to 1986. Guess what happened there, people? We bought a beautiful home up there with a view of a seven acre pond right behind her in the backyard. And the countryside of beautiful Wisconsin countryside beyond that. A beautiful view like that. A three bedroom home with a full basement, 1200 square feet. Nice kitchen, nice liver, two baths. Well, the other one was kind of like a half bath, but it had a shower, it had a standing shower, and the other main washroom had a, a, a full bath. So. Air conditioning. Uh, it doesn't get a lot of struggle in summertime. June, July, and August.